If you would have traveled back in time to the late 60s or early 70s and you would have asked random people on the street how they would have imagined the future, very likely you would have received almost unanimously the answer that by the year 2000 we would have gigantic cities on the moon and by 2024 we would have also long landed on Mars and even started building cities there and that by that time we would even have long colonized other planets or moons in the outer solar system. And here we are in the year 2024, a year which to my young kid self sounded super futuristic a year in which many sci-fi movies that I watched would take place, a year in which I was 100% sure that we would have flying cars and of course a moon base. But no moon base. Nothing whatsoever resembling a moon base. But hey, at least we got TikTok, right? And not only do we have absolutely no moon base whatsoever, but no person has been on the moon since 1972 for over half a century. What the hell went wrong? Hello dear futurists, welcome to Ultra Future, the channel where we are discussing all things future related. Make sure to like and subscribe and let's get started. The 60s, the age of the space race. In just a decade, the United States of America went from always being a step behind the Soviet Union regarding human spaceflight to beating the Soviets soundly by landing two men on the moon with Apollo 11 on July 20th, 1969. So in the course of only 10 years, the people could witness incredible advances in human spaceflight and in technology in general. And from July 1969 until December of 1972, 12 men would actually walk on the moon and in total there would be 6 successful landings of a manned lander on the lunar surface. Therefore, it should come as absolutely no surprise that all the visions of the future from that time period were extremely optimistic regarding our future in space. If we watch the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey, which as the name implies takes place in the year 2001, we can see that they envisioned not only a small base on the moon, but actually a quite large city. And in the book and the movie it is actually implied that this was not the only city on the moon by that time. Many other sci-fi series or movies also depicted humanity having pretty extensive settlements on the moon by the turn of the millennium. Which of course makes absolute sense, because if in only 10 years the US could go from absolutely no moon landing capability whatsoever to repeatedly successfully land men on the moon, well then what else could the US do in the next decade and in the one after that? But instead of building on the success of Apollo, the US just retreated from the moon. Just simply gave up never to return, even to this very day. If you would have told that to people back in the 60s and early 70s, they would have not believed you. Impossible, they would have said. Madness, others would have shouted. And yet here we are in the sci-fi sounding year 2024 and the moon base is still very far away. Why? Well, first of all, it is important to realize that the plans for moon bases were all there, even before the first people actually landed on the moon. NASA never wanted to just simply give up on Apollo, but in fact plans for extended duration stays on the lunar surface were already in place by the mid-60s and Apollo was just to serve as the first stepping stone on the pathway to permanently settle the moon with manned moon bases and later with lunar cities. These systems were called LESA, Lunar Exploration Systems for Apollo. They foresaw larger and more powerful versions of the Saturn V rocket to be built in the early 70s, which would have been able to transport larger payloads to the moon. Large pressurized habitat modules would have been delivered to the lunar surface, which would have been able to house multiple astronauts for long duration stays of multiple months. In addition, pressurized rovers and other exploration vehicles would have been deployed, thus allowing the astronauts to conduct very long and detailed explorations of the lunar surface. By the late 70s, it was envisioned multiple such LESA moon bases would have been built on different sites on the moon and by the 80s, it was planned that these lunar bases would serve as the seeds or the cores of future lunar cities, complete with lunar tourism and a lunar economy. Lunar mining would have yielded impressive amounts of precious metals and rare earth minerals which would have been launched on mass drivers back to earth, thus creating huge amounts of revenue and direct benefits on earth. Lunar tourism would have brought in huge amounts of revenue as well, helping to further fuel the growth of the nascent lunar economy and a lot of new scientific inventions from the moon would have propelled technology and electronics on earth. 
And so the plan was there from the early days of Apollo to have a continuous uninterrupted path towards a human colonized moon. But why did this never happen then? Well, some of you can already guess why. Because politics happened. The very same way that the moon race got kickstarted in the first place, namely as a competition between two rivaling superpowers, the very same way that geopolitics gave birth to the moon race, the very same way politics took it all away again. The hand that giveth sometimes also taketh. When it became clear that the US would resoundingly win the moon race and that the Soviets could not keep up because unfortunately their mastermind behind the rockets, Sergei Korolyov, died prematurely and so their N1 moon rocket unfortunately never launched successfully. When it became clear that the Soviets would not even be able to land a man on the moon, US Congress did not see the necessity anymore to keep funding NASA at those very high levels. During its peak, NASA received a staggering 4.5% of the total US annual budget in 1965 and 1966, respectively. But already by 1967, US Congress had decided to cut back on the future moon base plans. And by the time that people actually landed on the moon in 1969, US Congress had already axed all plans for large future moon bases. Not long later, even the Apollo missions 18 to 20 were cancelled as well. And so the fate of the moon landings was decided by politics. The short-sightedness of politicians had struck yet again, since they still sometimes, even today, don't understand that every penny invested into the space industry will flow back tenfold into the Earth economy by means of hundreds of thousands of jobs created, by means of many new inventions. The list of inventions that directly comes from the Apollo missions would absolutely surprise you. Even the CMOS sensors in your smartphone cameras with which you make pictures is a direct result of the space race. Even the internet itself which you use every day, even cardiac pacemakers that help to save lives and many other inventions directly come from the space race. But politicians are and will always be short-sighted and so they made a big mistake. They ended US space supremacy in its very infancy. And NASA never again got the necessary funding to build a moon base and therefore here we are now 50 years later and still not much has happened. Or has there? Well, slowly. Very slowly, we can actually see renewed interest in the moon, ever so slightly at first, hesitantly, but now faster and faster and faster, because now there is a new superpower awakening in the East, a new rival worthy of the US. And make no mistake, they do plan to land on the moon by the end of the 2020s. I am of course talking about China. China has very concrete plans to land their own people on the moon by around 2030 and suddenly the US sees itself challenged again. Lo and behold, we now have the Artemis program and concrete plans to land on the moon again. What a coincidence. By the end of the decade, with multiple systems, two moon landers are actually chosen to compete with each other. Two different systems to get us back to the moon. The huge and impressive SpaceX Starship moon lander and the smaller but more old school and thus proven national team moon lander led by Blue Origin. And we can see again that if there is political pressure, this time from China, Lo and behold, then suddenly Uncle Sam seems to awake again from his long slumber. But let's hope that this time the solution will be more permanent and that this time we are going to stay there. But judging from current plans and timelines, it indeed looks as if this time we are actually going to stay on the moon. So even though it surely is disappointing that we still have no moon base in this futuristic sounding year of 2024, my guess is that we won't have to wait much longer, thanks to this new Space Race 2.0 which is forming between the US and China and thanks to private companies such as SpaceX or Blue Origin. Exciting times might indeed lie ahead of us and let's hope that short-sighted politicians will not screw it up this time. If you are a futurist like me with a fable for moon bases, please like and subscribe since it would greatly help this new and small channel and see you in the future.